What's up guys, welcome back to the last episode of the second section. Um, today, I'm going to be showing you how to prevent checks. So not allow one of our pieces to go somewhere that would put our king in danger. And that that goes for like multiple different scenarios you're going to see during the tutorial. Um, we're, going to, we're going to be simulating moves. So we're going to assume that one move has moved somewhere and then simulating all the other piece to see if the king is in danger and then finally we're going to be checking if the person is in checkmate so we can have the win condition for a game to showcase this i'm going to be doing the full mate in action and i believe it's like this right so i'm just watching that like that and then you're pulling out the one in front of the king like this and then we should be able to checkmate so black team win in this case, and, and that's it. <laughs> so this actually works. One more example I want to give right here is I have the king, and I can only move in these three pattern. Not left, because I would be in danger by the pawn. Not right, because I would also be in danger by the pawn. But also, I can't kill that pawn, because the queen would be able to kill me. So it sees beyond the move that I want to do as well. Um, and one more thing that I'd like to showcase is blocking like obstruction in between um, other pieces. So for example here, I'm in check if I stay here um, and I can't actually move any of my other pieces because if I was to move another piece, well this one would kill me on next round. So absolutely I have to move my king this round. And finally the last thing I'd like to show is here for example, I can move all my piece, that's totally fine. Uh, but if I was to move my knight over here, it would put my king in danger for the sole purpose that uh, it would expose my king to the bishop over here, so I can't move him right now. And that's another condition that is put in. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be wrapping the whole thing up and you'll be able to have a neat chess game with all these special moves inside of it. If you guys enjoy, please leave me a like, drop me a subscription as well, and share with your friends because the more people we get to watch this, well, the faster I'm going to do the multiplayer. And um, yeah. That's going to help me out, and that's a good way to say I appreciate your free content, Michael. Keep on going. Thank you so much. I'll see you there. Today's episode is quite a technical one, so we're going to be looking at doing a couple of things, actually. We're going to be looking at preventing um, any move that we do that might endanger our king. So uh, in chess, you can't really move a piece if it's going to put yourself on a checkmate position. I'm saying checkmate for the sole purpose that since you're doing a move that endangers your kings, then it's the other person move and he can kill you. So we're going to be preventing that today. And the place we'll start with, and I'm not going to enumerate everything we've done, I've probably done that in the, uh, in the intro anyway, but uh, we are going to start in our update function. Because in our update function, we do a couple of things when we click on the mouse button. So I'm looking at this very specific piece of code here. When we press down on the mouse, we get a list of available moves for one single piece. And then we check if there's any um, special move for that single piece. That's good. So we populate your list of move we highlight. And then we add some more if it's possible um, through here. And then right before we highlight those style, I'd like to look for um, opportunities in which if you move, you're going to put your king in check. So I want to disable some here. So here we add two, and here I'd like to remove some. And I created a function called prevent check. That It's very important that I run it before we actually move, because I don't want to show the option of something that might endanger your king. This function, I'll actually declare it in the small section we have for special moves. So let me just collapse everything. Go under the special move small section we've made, and I am going to hide my face. I have a tired face this morning, <laughs> so private void, um, prevent check. I don't need to send in anything. I just want to run. Um, I just want to run on what we have locally. So that includes the available move list. So available move this one. Now the prevent check is going to be done in a very easy manner. First, I'd like to grab a reference to the king. We need to know where the king is at the moment, and to do so. I'll be doing um, the following. So we're going to go through every single one of our pieces and look if it's the king on our side. So if, uh, actually, first, let's start declaring king. So target king is going to be equal to null right now. And we're going to do a for loop with x and a for loop with y, in which the maximum is going to be tile count x and tile count y. You know what we're about to do. We're about to look inside of the chess pieces array. At the index 
x and y. So if this, so if the chess piece at the index x and y, dot tight is going to be equal to the king, and this also makes sure that this piece is a is equal to our team actually. So I'm going to do the following. Oh, I'm going to do it on a different line here. So if chess piece at the index x y dot team is hmm. Should we do equal to our team? Yeah, so is equal to currently dragging dot team. We have access to currently dragging because we're still technically in the pickup. So we just picked up that piece a second ago. And then we have access to this. But then uh, if all those conditions are met, we can then say target king is equal to chess piece at index x, y. The next thing I'd like to do is, uh, you probably guess it because I keep mentioning it all the time, but we are going to start simulating the moves for this piece, the currently dragging piece. And to do so, I'll create a new function just beneath that, that I'll call, hmm, should we return anything? No, so simulate move for single piece. We're going to be sending in a chess piece, the one we're trying to simulate for, whether that's a king or queen or whatever, really. Um, so let's do CP we are going to be sending in a reference of the available move. Now I forgot what type is available move already. It's a list, I believe. List of vector to in. So we're going to be sending in that, a reference. Hmm, let's call it here, just moves. I want to have a different name because we're going to be reusing this within the scope of this class. Therefore, I'd like to not have any um, a reference that, that have the same name. It, may, it might cause a lot of issue actually. So. That's going to be very important. And then finally, the chess piece, the king, or the target king. Okay, so we have access to pretty much all of that within this function now that we've done, uh, now that we looked for a king. So initially, we have the chess piece that's currently dragging. That's the one we're looking for. The list of move is a reference of the available move. That's a class wide field. And finally, the target king, the one we just simulated. Now, do note here that. Um, since we're sending in ref available move, we will be deleting moves that are putting us in check. That's a very long way to say, hey, here it's a reference and we're going to be deducing moves from that in case we have to. Now our simulate move function is going to be split in three very small sections, actually <laughs> two very small sections and one that is very big. Um, current values. So we're going to be saving the current values to reset after the function call. We're going to be then going through all the moves, simulate them, and check if we're in check. I hope that's a way to say things in English. And finally, remove from the current move list. Current available move list. So, first step is I'm just going to be saving in the position I'm in right now. So I'm going to say actual x is equal to piece, actually cp. Hmm, should I be calling it piece or cp? cp is fine. Current x and current y. I'm just saving some values. We will need them in the future to reset because we're going to be taking this uh, piece and we're going to be changing the position of it as we are simulating the move. But then eventually we have to reset at the end. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Now, what we're going to do next here is just declare a list of things we have to remove. List of vector to int that I'll call moves moves to remove. And we'll just declare that list here. So that's it for the first section. It's just a matter of declaring a couple of fields. I'll do the last section next. So for as many moves we have to remove, so moves that remove dot count. I'm gonna, just going to say here moves dot remove at moves to remove at the index i. Just like this. And that's going to be it for our third section. So you probably guessed it. We are going to add move that we have to remove in there. And then by the end, we are going to make sure we delete them. Where it gets really, really hard, and uh, <laughs> actually, I think the, the rest of the episode is going to be on this one. Um, it's inside of this function. We have to simulate, and it's going to be quite rough. Let's actually start right now with a for loop. We first have to iterate through all the moves available to us. So moves.count. That's the one we receive in reference, by the way. 
I'll start by declaring two field, one for sim x and another one for sim y. We're going to start by saying moves at the index i dot x and moves at the index i dot y. What are these? Well, when you pick up a piece, for example, if you pick up a rook, then we're going to have a list of moves that goes all the way from left, right, up and down. Um, these are the move. These are the exact position at where the rook is going to land. And I'm just declaring it within the scope of this for loop because we're, we're going to be using that quite a lot in the future. Then right after that, I'm going to declare the position of the king with a vector to int. And I'll say king position this simulation. And it's going to be equal to a new vector to int with the target king dot current x and the target king dot current y. Now, um, the reason I have to declare this here is because there's chances that we might actually have moved the king. So did we simulate the king move? We'll check that right here. So if the CP dot type, so the chess piece we're moving right now, is it type of king? If it is type of king, then instead of using the current X and current Y, well, we have to use this. So the sim x and sim y because we moved the king right so this king position the simulation is no longer correct if we're doing that the next part is where i start simulating the board but to simulate the board i don't want to reuse the chess pieces array like so for the sole purpose that we don't want to override what we currently have this is just a simulation i don't want to see that reflected during my game right so we're going to be copying the um the two-dimensional array I just write it this way and not a reference so I can't just say something of the sort so I can't just say chess pieces uh, call it whoops that's that's the type by the way so whoop, there you go chess pieces array uh, no s <laughs> there we go okay simulation is equal to chess pieces I can't do that for the sole purpose that this is going to bind as a reference and as we change things within the simulation here it's also going to change thing in the reference so instead what we're gonna to have to do is do a i believe they call it a hard copy or shallow copy i'm not sure basically it's a copy without reference so i'm just trying to copy this list and we'll do so with a for loop so that's our usual for loop we can't use i anymore because we're already inside of a loop that has i but that's okay we haven't been using i in the past for for when we iterate through this very specific array. I'll count y, and then we'll do simulation at the index x, y is going to be equal to chess pieces. Oops, actually. Oh, you know what? Before I actually set this, uh, let's do additional check to see if there's something in here. So if chess pieces at the index x, y is not equal to null, then we're going to go ahead and um, say well simulation at the index x y is going to be equal to the chess pieces x y hmm and i think we're good here however i'd like to do one more thing and i'd like oh i actually forgot to do something here so what i'm going to do is um on top of declaring a simulation I'm also going to declare a list of chess pieces that are going to be attacking me next round. So if I simulate a move, after that it's going to be the other teams to play. And I want to, I want to know if that other team can kill me. So I'm going to declare a list of chess pieces that I'll call simulation attacking pieces. Which are basically going to be all the other pieces from the other team. And the reason I wanted to do that here is simply because since we're already iterating through the board right now, um, I also want to make sure that since you know, I don't want to do two iteration for this instead I'll just do it all in one and I'll say if the simulation or we could say chess piece it's the same thing here the simulation at xy dot team is not equal to the cp dot team it means this is the attacking team piece and we can say add simulation xy all right, so bear with me, we got a couple more to do now. Um, so at this moment, we have the king's position and we have a simulation of our cheese, um, our board, actually our chess piece board. Now, what we're gonna do next is actually simulate that move. 
So we're just going to be taking the piece that we were supposed to move and we're going to move it by doing the following. Simulation at index actual x, actual y, that's our currently dragging dot x, currently dragging dot y. We're putting that on null because we're moving away from this piece with whatever piece we have right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our CP current x and put it on simulation x and keep e and CP current y simulation y. So we're moving the content inside of the chess piece. Um, eventually, we have to make sure to reset that because we're actually moving a real piece right here. But do realize that we're not using the move to function. So we're not going to have anything graphical. We're not going to have anything um, that is going to affect the main board. We're just setting values here, hard coded manually. And then finally, we have to put that piece uh, where it belongs with the new move. So simulation at the index sim x and also sim y is going to be equal to our chess piece, the one we're receiving parameter. OK. And now this way, we should have uh, simulated our move. And the important part now is to check if the king is in danger. But actually, before we do that, let's make sure we didn't kill anything. So did one of the piece get taken down, actually got <laughs> taken down during our simulation? So the reason I'm doing this call here is because earlier we were adding all the enemy pieces inside of an array and now one of them is gone in case we killed one of them. So what I'm going to do is just check real quick while we did our move earlier, did we, I mean, not did we, but was there a attacking piece there? We'll do it in the same fashion as we did the castling move. So we're going to say dead piece is equal to simulate attacking piece dot fine. And the predicate is going to be the following. If my current x is equal to sim x and current y, oops, current y is equal equal to sim y, and I just realized that I use I use predicate um, x all the time, but that might be confusing here, so I'll just say c for chess piece. There we go. Now, if there is something here, if that piece is not equal to null, then let's make sure we actually remove it from this array. Just like so. Okay, so the next step has to do with um, knowing if our king is in danger. And to know if our king is in danger, we're going to go through all the attacking pieces and we're going to store their available move inside of an array. Um, actually, a list. I like doing lists. And then after that, once we have that list, we can check uh, if that contains the king's position. If so, we are in danger and we're going to be removing that move. So bear with me. I think there's like two little section here to do. So um, let's do get all the simulated attacking pieces move. And to do so, I'm going to declare a new vector two list of vector two int sim move declare that right here and we'll do a for loop for all the single attacking piece here now i'm not sure what to put anymore we have so many iterators let's do a for attacking piece simulating attacking piece dot count and then we'll do the following let's just grab a reference to our piece moves simulating attacking piece get available move and I'll send in a reference, but now this time uh, we're not sending in a, re a reference of chess pieces, we're sending in a reference of the simulation, and that's very important. If we were to send in the normal board, then we would always get the same result. Here we're trying to simulate these moves. And there we go, so do we have everything we need here? Tile count does not exist in this context. Okay, well let's do tile count like this, and tile count like that. Awesome. We can then add the list of these move within the simulation move so we can stack them together. So we're going to say for int b, I guess we're at b now. <laughs> uh, we're going to say pieces move dot count. Then we can add it to the simulation move list. We're going to do a fresh uh, recap of everything once we're done with the, the function, actually. But 
at the moment let's keep on going we have all the move here and what we're going to do is check is the king in trouble if so remove the move so here we're going to be using the function we've created earlier called contain valid move and we can do so by sending in the reference of all the move we just tested it so simulation move as a reference and the king position this simulation if that's the case it means that one of the move that we just simulated through this actually contains the king's position and then what we say is moves to remove dot add and the move here so i believe that moves at the index i let's just make sure moves at the index y yeah exactly okay and we got it one thing we have to do before we end that is just restore the actual cp data and we'll do that by saying current x is equal to actual x and cp.current y is equal to actual y so next time we don't have any problem all right that's the big very big simulation function that we have to create um and let's just go through it very quickly i don't want to bore you too much with that but let's have a look so initially we declare a couple of field then we get the king position we make sure the king position is the same as before and if the king has moved then we make sure to also change that then we get a reference but let's just call it a copy right we copy our board layout and we get a list of the attacking pieces we then simulate a move like just like if we were to play for real we simulate that move on our simulation board and not our real board then we make sure hey, if we actually kill the piece let's remove it from the array of the attacking pieces and then what we do is we go through all the enemy pieces and we simulate their move one by one one after the other we store that inside of an array and we add them together so not only this is like for example um, the enemy pawn move but on top of that there is also its rook move its bishop its king it has all the enemy move this round and all the move are based on the simulated board move they're not based on what we see in the screen but instead what we could have done with whatever piece we have in our hand right now we check is the king in check somehow by any of these like we don't know if it's the the queen killing him we don't know if it's a, a knight but if he is in danger we're removing that move completely and then finally we go again until all the moves are done okay and of course um we then remove that from the list so with that i believe we actually have enough to see this working in the game at the moment yeah so this is positioned properly inside of the update function we can now give this a try and let's see if we can put our king in danger we're gonna need a little bit of time just to set this up but uh oh actually you know what we start off with a error so that's not good let's have a look what's up with that so over here um when i do my prevent check i don't actually check if there's a piece here so it just it tried to look for uh, a piece that in the index that had nothing therefore i got a out of bound exception so this is just a small small thing i forgot here so we're gonna check actually you know what let's just grab this line completely and check the following is the chess piece at the index xy not equal to null and we should be golden hopefully there's no more typo like that let's give this a try so i can move stuff as i could before we are going to go ahead and just pull out our king and put him in danger somehow there we go all right so as you as actually there's a good example right here um i was trying to move in diagonal but i can't because this pawn is right here and this pawn could actually kill my king so let's go ahead and just test this out a little bit further i'm gonna go ahead and move this here as you can see earlier i couldn't go there but now i can uh, go on either side because the king is no longer in danger and that's gonna give us uh, for example here i can't go there because the pawn can kill me and i can't go there because the other king can kill me so therefore it means that the king cannot chase each other so here i can't go anywhere in these places because of the king uh let's go a little bit further than that bring out more complex move than just kings and now my king is in check and he can't go here that's normal 
can't go here because of the pawn, because of the queen, uh, and we're safe over there. So you get the point, it seems to be working quite good, um, and I also want to make sure that if there's something blocking in between me and my king, then that that we can't move a certain piece. So let me give you an example here if I can try and go a little bit faster. If I just move my bishop anywhere, um, it's going to put my king in danger because then the queen has direct access to it. So the only move I can do, as you can see here, is just kill the queen. Because if I was to kill the queen, the simulation would say, well, there's no more danger from the queen because she's dead. So that's exactly the behavior I was looking for and I'm glad it's actually working. That's good. Um, I can also move in that angle because if I was to move in that angle, it would mean that, you know, it's still in the way. And if it's still in the way, then we're still fine. Good. So the preventing of the check seems to be working just fine. All right, so right here we've done um, the check we had to do prior to moving. So before we move, we actually check where we can and where we can't go. But then there's one more thing we have to check as well. Once we are done moving, did we actually put the other team in checkmate? And that's the second part of this video. So in the second part, we're going to be looking at not only doing the prevention of the check, but we're going to be doing um, checkmate. Are we looking for checkmate? Eventually the game has to end, right? Um, and since we're not allowing the king to move certain places or pieces to move certain places, we have to check, do you even have a move left to do? And if so, then do that move or else checkmate and then the game ends. That's also why I mentioned earlier that uh, we, we call it checkmate, but we call it by looking if the dead piece is actually a king. But technically, that's never going to happen from this point on. Uh, checkmate is going to be done automatically. Now, just like we just laid down the simulate move for single piece, we're also going to lay down another function that um, is actually going to return a boolean, and that boolean is going to be, actually the function name is going to be check for checkmate. It's a, it's a weird word you could say, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. So it's the same, um, it's in the same kind of ballpark as prevent check. Prevent check is before we move, and then check for checkmate is going to be after we move. Um, and we're going to do that inside of the move too. So once we move our piece, we confirm that the move has been done successfully. We process the special move and then we're going to say check for checkmate. This returns a boolean, however. So we're going to do the following over here. We're going to say if check for checkmate, if that is true, it means that somebody is checkmate and then we can call checkmate with the right team. The right team in this case would be the current piece dot mm, team, I believe the winning team. Uh, we're going to be testing this out, and if it's not the right team, we'll just come back and swap it. Okay, now inside of our check for checkmate, <laughs> I hate saying that, uh, inside of here, we're going to do a couple of things. So we're going to need to do pretty, pretty much the same thing as we've done here. So first, we're going to need a reference to the target king. We are going to need a reference to the attacking pieces, to the defending piece in this case as well, uh, because we'll have to check if those defending pieces have a way to prevent that from happening, prevent a checkmate. Let's actually start drafting them right now. I'm going to start with last move is equal to the move list at the index move list dot count minus one. So I'm grabbing a reference to the last move. And this is actually just to know what team played last. It's a it's a weird way to do it. But at this point, when we do check for checkmate, we no longer have the currently dragging inside of our hand. And we no longer have all of this information that we had prior. So instead, uh, we're going to grab the, the team through the last move. So we're going to say chess pieces at the index last move. Oops, so last move at the index one, the landing position, and then last move at the index one dot y. That's going to be our dot team. Does that make sense here? Oh, it's actually because I have to invert those. So let me just go like this. Right, so if the last move team was equal to zero, therefore I want to return one else zero. So if the last person to move was the white team, therefore the target team is one uh, black. And if it was black, then the target team is white. Okay, so now we determine which king is in danger. Let's actually create a bunch of reference, just like we've done earlier, right? So here we're gonna do a couple of reference. You know what, let's grab this code. It's gonna be a little bit faster. We'll need a target king, but not only that, I'm also going to start getting a list of the chess piece for the attacking pieces and for the defending pieces. 
Now let's go down in our for loops and over here I'm going to branch out and actually put some brackets. So I'm actually going to go this way and rewrite some of that. Okay, so if the team is not equal to the target team, or actually equal to the target team, that could do it. Then if it's equal to the target team, this is the defending team pieces. So add chess piece at index x, y. Okay, I'll also put bracket here. And if it's not my team, then it would be a attacking piece. So attacking piece x, y. And for the defending pieces in here, we're also going to be looking for the king reference. So we're going to say if the chess piece at the index x, y, the one we're actually looking at right now, if its type is type of king, then we are going to say target king is equal to it. Oops, x, y. Okay, so we got our reference. We have the first step done. Um, and it actually bothers me to see that in red right now. So I'm going to go ahead and say return false. So we have a bunch of reference over here. We have the king, we have defending piece, and also the attacking pieces. Before we go any further, let's have a look. Is the king attacked right now? Before we, we go and we create simulation of every single move, um, let's just have a look if we need to do that, right? So we're going to take the list of all the attacking pieces right now and are they attacking the defending king? So we'll do it this way with a vector to int. Current available moves and we'll declare a new list of vector2. Now um, to do so, since this is not only for a single piece, like what we do is when we pick up a piece we get the available move but only for one piece. Here we, we are going to do it for every single one of these. So um, we have a list called current available move and we'll iterate through a certain array. This array is going to be the attacking pieces count. And in here, we're going to do the exact same thing as we've done earlier in, uh, in the simulate function. So we're going to do this. I'm actually going to copy this piece of code, but so pieces move attacking pieces at the index i get available move here we can actually use the uh, the chess pieces we're not in sort of simulation just yet and we can do for int whatever it is pieces move dot count and add that to the current available move okay so what we've done right here we took all the attacking piece we um we listed down their move and we're going to check does one of them contain the king so do we have a contains valid move? The list is current available move and the king position is the um, where's the target king? Target king here dot current x target king current y. Obviously we need to put that inside of a vector 2 so let me go back and do a new vector 2 int and now we should be good to go. Oh, I might need one more. There we go. Okay, so we haven't done any simulation. However, we did get all the available move for these pieces. So I guess there's still an operation here, but the expensive one is going to be when we simulate. And we will do that in here only if we are in check right now. So this is, are we in check right now? If you wanted to play a small sound, if you wanted to do something, that's where you would do it. And now this is where the magic of our code is going to come in because we, we are not going to be rewriting the whole simulation move. Instead, we're going to write roughly five lines that will take care of checking everything we need. So first, king is under attack. Can we move something to help him? We can do so by first iterating through the list of defending pieces. So defending pieces dot count and get the move that we can do. So list of vector2 int again. This is the defending moves. And inside of this defending move, um, actually, I'm not going to declare it right here. I'm actually going to do it all in a single line. So we'll do defending piece at index i get available move. And right here, 
we can send in a reference of the chess piece. No simulation yet again. Um, the tile count X and tile count Y, that's our parameter. And then finally, we are going to simulate the move for those defending pieces. So go ahead and declare the following. The chess piece we're going to be using is the defending piece at the index I, like so. The list of move is actually the one we just created a second ago. So defending, oops, it's a reference. What is this weird class anyway? So ref uh, defending moves and the king's position, well, the target king, I believe it's just, it's the target king that we have earlier. Okay. And with that, it's going to change the defending move. So um, that's the move that we're allowed to do. And it's also a reference, which means that when we go out of the simulate for single piece, it's just like we had earlier, right? So when we wrote this earlier, we said, so it's just like we said earlier when we call this function, since we're sending the, a reference to this, then it's also going to remove the move that we're not able to do inside of this array, oh, sorry, this list. So yeah, technically, if we don't have any chances left, if we are in checkmate, this list is going to be empty when it comes out of the simulate move for single piece. We can do a if defending moves dot count. Oops. If that one is not equal to zero, I'm going to go ahead and return false because if it's not equal to zero, let's just exit. Our king is not in checkmate. He is in check, but it's not in checkmate. And if we go through the whole list, and our defending moves dot count is actually equal to zero. It means that we go through and here we're going to do return um, true. And that is our checkmate exit. In the check for checkmate, we first start getting some reference. We check if the king is attacking right now. And to do so, we just store the list of all the available moves from the other team. So we just pick every single pieces one by one. We check. Um, if any of those have the option to attack the king, and we do that over here, if the king is not attacked, then we return false. And we just say, hey, this is not a checkmate condition. Now, if we are in check, so if the king can be attacked, we are going to check every single of our move, so the defending team. If the defending team has um, have move that they can do to defend the king, then we're going to go ahead and return false because they have more than, than, than zero move basically. But if they do have zero move, so if that's not true, we're going to go to the next piece. Can that piece defend the king? Yes, no, if it can't, and all the piece can't defeat the king, we go through our checkmate exit and return through. And of course, if we return through on this, we call the function checkmate with the right team, hopefully. And now it's actually time for us to give this a try. So let's go ahead and play a game of chess in between me and me. And then so here we run into our first uh, example. Um, at the moment, I am on the black team turn. As you can see, I can pick this up, but I can't move my pawn here. I can't move that here, can't move that here. I can actually move this one here. Why? Well, because the, the queen actually um, has the king in check, just in diagonal like that. And the way to save him is by either putting my pawn in front of him and also the queen putting actually that's the only option is it yeah and the king could also move so I have I only have these two move I can do technically so I'm gonna move well I'll move that <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and put him in check again okay he can get out of it now he has multiple option to get out you're gonna keep on killing that until we reach to a point where it's checkmate is that checkmate actually I think we're going to get checkmate here because as I go closer, no, he can kill my queen. Hmm. Well, we're going to give it a try, right? So his only option right now to get out of this position is by killing my queen because if he goes here, queen kills, queen kills, queen kills, um, the knight kills, and then the queen kills here. So the only way we can actually get out of this position is by either moving my king to kill or taking the other queen and killing it. Okay, so I'll go for the checkmate now. Um, what happened is if I put my rook over here, he's going to be checked in all the direction. Yeah, it seems good. So if I drop here, he's going to be in checkmate. The white team has won because I put the black team in checkmate. We can then hit reset and everything should be back to normal. So that's uh, 
That's it. I believe we've done what we had to do. Right, so this was a really good time. I really had a lot of fun making all of this. Um, and it's not over. It's definitely not over because in the next section, we're going to be looking at making this multiplayer. But not only that, we're also going to be polishing a couple of things, such as promotion. I'd like to have a list of things you can go through for promotion. Not only that, but I want to see the chest notation. So I already have a small example in my project that I've done earlier. I can show it to you right now because why not? It's right here. And I've also started doing the multiplayer code as well. As you can see, I wanted to show you something that I've done earlier um, that we're going to be adding in the third section as well. It's the move list. So as I move my pawn from this to there, I've added um, an object that is not related to the chessboard, but that listens to event from the chessboard in which I just input the move list. Now I can't move the other team because right now I'm debugging and I'm, uh, I have to do turn by turn, but online. Um, but as you can see here, we get the move list. It's also something we're going to be doing in the third section. Right now, it's not exactly how I wish it to be, because all I do is I take the position one and I go to position two. But on top of that, I want to have the real chess notation. So I'm going to go through learning all the special things. So when you have a, a castle, for example, if it's on the left side, then it's just O dash O. And if it's on the right side, it's O dash O dash O. Things like that. I want to have the real notation and it's all going to be there. But I'm not done yet and I need a little bit of help to get there. So guys, if you could please subscribe to the channel, I'm going to be releasing this when I hit 10,000 subscriber. But until then, um, I'm still working on the multiplayer side of this thing and I'm having quite a lot of fun. So make sure you hit a drop, you hit the drop. <laughs> make sure you drop a like, you share this with your friend, help me get to my goal and I'll be releasing this very shortly. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. We now have a chess game that is legit. And if there's anything you'd like to say in the comment, if you see any problem, if you see something, it's still time to fix it. Therefore, I'd love to take your input. If you have any commentary, I'll pin your comment if it's something that is that is great, right? So if you found a bug or something, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll pin your comment. And uh, we can keep on going in that direction. So guys, thank you so much for watching once more and I'll be seeing you in the next section. Cheers.